The femur is the longest and strongest bone in the body. It consists of a proximal extremity, shaft, and distal extremity. For this video, we will use a left femur. The proximal extremity consists of the head, neck, greater trochanter, lesser trochanter, tubercle of the femur, intertrochanteric crest, and intertrochanteric line. The head articulates with the acetabulum of the os coxae, forming the hip joint. This oval depression is a fovea capitis femoris. The ligamentum capitis femoris attaches to the fovea. The neck contains a number of nutrient foramen that allow for vascular supply. So injuries to the neck of the femur can lead to an AVN or avascular necrosis. This is very similar to the talus. The greater trochanter consists of two surfaces, the lateral and the medial, and four borders, the posterior, superior, inferior, and anterior. The gemella superior and gemella inferior blend with the tendon of obturator internus to insert into the medial surface. The trochanteric or digital fossa is also found on the medial surface. The tendon of obturator externus inserts into the fossa. The gluteus medius inserts on the lateral surface. The vastus lateralis takes part of its origin from the anterior and inferior borders. The gluteus minimus inserts on the anterior border. The piriformis inserts on the superior border. And the iliopsoas inserts on the lesser trochanter. The intertrochanteric crest connects the greater and lesser trochanter and is located at the posterior aspect of the femur. The quadrate tubercle is located at its midpoint. The quadratus femoris attaches to the quadrate tubercle. The intertrochanteric line is located at the anterior aspect of the femur. It continues distally as the spiral line. The tubercle of the femur is found at the junction of the intertrochanteric line and the anterior border of the greater trochanter. The vastus medialis takes part of its origin from the lower portion of the intertrochanteric line. The vastus lateralis takes part of its origin from the tubercle of the femur. The most important structure of the shaft is the linea aspera because it serves as the reference point for all other anatomical landmarks. The linea aspera is this rough area found in the middle one-third of the posterior aspect of the shaft. It consists of a medial lip and a lateral lip. If we follow the medial lip proximally, we can identify the spiral line, which we already said is a continuation of the intertrochanteric line. The vastus medialis takes part of its origin from the spiral line. Between the spiral line and the gluteal tuberosity is the pectineal line. The pectineal line begins at the inferior aspect of the lesser trochanter. The medial lip continues distally as the medial supracondylar line and ends inferiorly at the adductor tubercle. The vastus medialis takes part of its origin from the medial lip of the linea aspera and the supracondylar line. To review, we stated that the vastus medialis originates from the lower portion of the intertrochanteric line, spiral line, medial supracondylar line, and the medial lip of the linea aspera. The oblique and vertical fibers of the adductor magnus also insert at the medial supracondylar line, but only the vertical fibers of the adductor magnus insert at the adductor tubercle. The lateral lip of the linea aspera continues proximally as the gluteal tuberosity. The gluteal tuberosity has a medial and lateral lip. The gluteus maximus inserts into both lips of the tuberosity. 
the vastus lateralis takes part of its origin from the lateral lip of the linea aspera and the lateral lip of the gluteal tuberosity. Let's review the origins of the vastus lateralis. We said it originates from the anterior and inferior borders of the greater trochanter, tubercle of the femur, intertrochanteric line, and the lateral lips of the linea aspera and gluteal tuberosity. Sometimes a tubercle may be found in the proximal portion of the gluteal tuberosity and this is known as a third trochanter. It is much more prominent in this femur. So again we could see the gluteal tuberosity and in the proximal portion the third trochanter. The lateral lip of the linea aspera continues distally as the lateral supracondylar line. The short head of the biceps femoris takes its origin from the lateral lip of the linea aspera and the lateral supracondylar line. This area is a palpiteal surface. It is found between the medial and lateral supracondylar lines. The distal extremity consists of the medial and lateral condyles and these articulate with the condyles of the tibia. This is a medial epicondyle and this is a lateral epicondyle. The medial condyle extends further inferior than the lateral. The femoral condyles are connected anteriorly by the patellar surface, also known as the trochlear surface. Posteriorly, the condyles are separated by the intercondylar fossa or intercondylar notch. The superior aspect of the intercondylar fossa is the intercondylar line.